Yo, so we're this is the first solo cast featuring Trent McCloskey as my subconscious. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you doing? Good, man. See, that's like now, anytime <laughs> you think of him talking, he's my subconscious mind, and he's just like, "Yo, no, but did you think about it this way?" And then he's gonna <laughs> yeah, talk could, about it for a minute. <laughs> I could probably, I could probably play a good subconscious mind. So I'm excited. <laughs> your, your subconscious is always gonna have his juice with him too. <laughs> Isn't this Do you have honey like, and fruit too? Uh, um, not on me, but it's about to be at like eleven. Right after we get the, off of this, no matter how long it goes, <laughs> honey, fruit, sugar, all that stuff. That's awesome. That mm-hmm. is awesome. No, so we were just talking about batching. So no, the reason I was saying with batching is um, I've been seeing just a lot about it recently. Probably my reticular activating system, looking for more efficient ways to do work. Mm-hmm. Thanks, thanks, RCA. But um, <laughs> or, or, or yeah, back it up. So we're talking about content creation. Yeah, so we're talking uh, about yeah. content creation. Like batching is like you allocate a time. So like when you're writing your Instagram captions, like they take a long time, right? They take a good bit. Yeah, I mean mainly for me, it, it's writing. It's easy, but it's like a first draft. And then I have yeah. to make those edits, and then I'll probably do a second draft read it out loud to myself and then maybe make like a third draft kind of thing. So there, yeah, it's a bit of a process unless it's already like pre-written essentially exactly. like an older post. But that, so like, so batching, you would take like, Hey, I have six Instagram posts this week. You know, the pictures, you know, the basis for them and you write out all the captions mm-hmm. on like Sunday for you allocate like three hours today. Mm-hmm. That way, one, you don't have to stress those days and be like, Oh shit, I gotta get this out or I haven't gotten something out yet. Yeah. But two, you're in that mindset of just writing captions. Yeah. So you're actually, like, oh cool, I'm gonna bang all of them out. Actually, yeah, I actually I've never done that yet. It's it's typically whenever and actually that's actually a really good point because whenever the days that I feel most productive, yeah. I don't spend as like sometimes like the Instagram, like the graphic and the caption included, that could be like literally a few hours three or four yeah. hours which it seems so long but it just it goes so long because like the caption a couple drafts the graph graphics a couple graphs or drafts um but if you do all those captions at once mm-hmm. it would free up in like the weekdays I, i'm gonna actually try to do that actually and you can do just because, like yeah, in that mindset in that flow state of writing all the captions and then you can even like take you know a palm or two 25 minutes or whatever yeah. and go um through that caption that you wrote you know on that sunday or whatever and um, probably update it, but that is obviously much faster, more efficient than doing it from scratch, essentially. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I mean, you could do that with your graphic design too, because now you have the analytic, you're looking with the artistic eye. Yeah. Um, I did it last night, and I did one, one for a clip that I'll probably cut from this, and like in it, I'm like, yes, I'm batching content right now, and uh, I don't even care if this doesn't apply. I'm going to use this caption because it's great, so. Mm-hmm. oh yeah <laughs> exactly i think now that's going to be really effective because i'm trying to do more video and more yeah. podcasting and um Dude, I'm lo- on, like on website get back into blogging so it, really managing my time efficiently is going to be important because you know just trying to do it all it's you know it's tough to get yeah. even though it might be like the same idea same piece of content but still distributed across all those medias that takes a little bit of time so yeah, yeah i have not tried that yet surprisingly uh- I'm loving, <laughs> I'm loving the IG TV, dude. I got a mm. think I'm gonna do one today. I'm gonna start doing that. I mm. really my whole thing though is I just want these. I just want awesome guests on these podcasts. Yeah. Oh damn! I just I feel honored. I feel yeah. <laughs> it's a blessing. Yeah. So and obviously getting to play the role of your subconscious mind. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's pretty. That's pretty awesome, <laughs> dude. I, I think IG TV is it's one of it's so new. Like no one knows anything yeah. about it. Um, and we're just you know trying to just get more content up there to see what happens. Essentially. Exactly. I think it's kind of fun though. I'm almost treating it like quite literally like a TV series, an episode yeah. or not an episode, a bunch of episodes, essentially. It is. Like, I want to figure it out. I'm like, does the title, is that keyworded? Is the description mm-hmm. keyworded? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of unknowns. I saw someone with a downloadable guide already and I'm like, dude, like no way, you know anything about what's going on. <laughs> no, it's <is>, like <laughs> literally impossible. <laughs> like unless like you were literally in Instagram or whatever, Facebook or something. Get my free Instagram TV downloadable guide. Oh, cool. What does it do? Well, you got to, you know, film videos, fill out the title, mm-hmm. fill out the description. There you mm-hmm. go. But exactly. hashtags might work. I don't know. Have you yes, tried searching I was, I was, it? 
I was literally about to say that. I don't know because let's see. I'll try. It, right it, it quite it quite literally seems like you can only find Instagram TV stuff if you go on the Instagram TV. But at the same time, though, I feel like it's. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. Because I feel like it's so new, dude. I think it's gonna be like what pops up. Okay. Oh, uh, your phone is new, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. Okay. Right but uh hashtag body bodybuilding comes up josiah comes up for me because of course um i follow on if you just search if you search a hashtag yeah if you search well i searched a hashtag but it's looking by words so this is gonna make and for most people who don't know um what's in your description on instagram gets searched a lot or gets a search quality so if you don't do your description you don't have good keywords in it and your name is like something that doesn't make sense like i'm going to change life design coach in a minute now because i'm realizing for instagram tv it's going to be way more about search quality mm-hmm. um then you're never going to get found just organically yeah. like of course you got to post post and you got to find the right hashtags and stuff but it's yeah. one of those things which almost makes me want to kind of treat it as I've been treating normal Instagram captions, mm-hmm. the whole nine yards, right? Not the caption of like what the video is about. And then with the hashtags as well. I think treat it more like YouTube. Oh yes. Yeah. That's that, where I'm or what I'm thinking about with it. Cause I'm like, there's like, you know, like everybody's like, they're competing with YouTube. I'm like, well, if they're competing with YouTube, then I'm going to just treat it like YouTube. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, get my videos in there. I'm doing the, like, fade thing. You know, Justin Odicho has, like, some fire um, ways to make Instagram videos. And he always puts... Oh, really? Imp- oh, yeah. I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check it out. Um, I, I love Instagram TV because it's it feels more personal. Like, um, because, like, the vertical video. I guess uh, that's, like, the whole thing if it's, like, trying to compete with YouTube with, like, the vertical... Which is another thing too. It's like, damn it! Like, if you film a video in vertical or horizontal, horizontal, it's not going to work. <laughs> like, well, for, it can unless you edit it, I guess. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like you know when you see like it looks like top and bottom screen is like the same colors as the middle, and the middle is the video. Yeah, that's. Are so you saying edit it to put like a? Yeah, so you just make it nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to start doing that with a lot of videos. Cause like, uh, again, I've been thinking about, this is like something I've been thinking about so much too, is like anybody who dies in the content game is like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to make a YouTube video and then I'm going to share it on all these platforms. And it's like, well, people don't want to go from platform to platform. And yeah. why do you want to create this content? Are you doing it? So people like it and they see it and they're like, Oh cool. Mm-hmm. This is, I'm the platform I'm on and I like what's going on? Or are you doing it because you're like, I'm going to grow and I'm going to force the growth? Because that's like that whole approach of like, just share to everything. Like Twitter, come on. We yeah. know Twitter like a mother. I mean, I, I, I think we've been guilty, Twitter. a little bit guilty of this in the past too, yeah. like 100%. But now like really embracing that, the different platforms are different platforms for a reason. Mm-hmm. And you can have that same idea of the content you want to create, but you have to make sure it's built for that platform you want to share it on. Exactly. And so, so you guys know one second ago, if you saw me like rub something in my eyes, a little bit of caffeine on, uh, under the bags of your eyes will help them wake up. So, Oh, nice. I, I didn't know what, I thought you were just rubbing your eye. I didn't know you were rubbing caffeine. How'd you rub caffeine on that? Is it straight I coffee? Some coffee? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were straight coffee on that. I've been, uh, I've been dry brushing a lot too recently. I saw that. I think I, like told you, like, I got that whole kit. Like it's like full on the long brush, the short brush, the one that has like a strap for your hand they can go on. So it doesn't fall <laughs> off. I've been loving it. Yeah. I think it's almost, it's tough to say to notice like the flushing of like the mm-hmm. lymphatic system, but definitely um smoother skin. So like probably all yep. the reasons that somebody would want to do it as in smoother skin and that kind of thing, the exfoliation yeah it, that's been working but at the same time they're like i just i do it for like the low-key benefit of like hopefully you know improving health totally the but I, I haven't i can't say like oh yeah i, I feel my mm-hmm. lymphatic system getting flushed every morning Whoa. it's like no <laughs> not yeah. really but hopefully it's doing its thing yeah i do too i like it because it almost it wakes the skin up it's like whoa yes. i'm here yes it, but like it, so i've been noticing more and more too is like these areas of our body that uh they're so tight and it feels like tight to move it in a certain way do you know what i'm saying like Um, we don't we don't think it like you have to have a lot of body awareness to normally like notice this that it's 
like literally stiffness and like muscles or stiffness mm-hmm. and skin uh elasticity and stuff but like there's certain areas like you could find them like wherever where it's like if you try to pull that area out it feels super like no i can't go anywhere and like mm-hmm. then you can loosen it up and it's like what the hell like we're so preconditioned to think that well we're not pre we should be preconditioned to understand our body but we're so like mm-hmm. Force everything into a cast. Or, yeah, or almost like yeah, like so numb to it and not aware of it, or yeah. thinking that, or getting so used to feeling, let's just say, feeling bad that that mm-hmm. becomes a normal, and you almost forget about how good you can actually feel. Dude, that's like <laughs> sleep and like energy. That's something mm-hmm. like I've noticed, especially like just I mean, moving between Detroit here and then uh, going to Columbus. Is just like these like pockets of time are fine for like, mm-hmm. okay, I can only get six hours and then I'm going to nap and whatever. Yeah. And then there's like times when it's like, you're just like, no, I'm just going to do the same thing every day. And like, you, f- you know, you're tired, but you're just like, this is life. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't <laughs> live that way. You can. And that's like the whole like kind of caffeine addiction too. It's like you and I both love our coffee, mm-hmm. but in the same sense, I try to at least push my coffee back one or two hours, like yeah. after I have like some water and stuff in the morning. And that is honestly a pretty good indicator after I do like the morning routine on how tired and how I'm yeah. feeling exactly before I just drown myself with coffee, because then you might not even know and you might get all hyped up and just think like, that's, that's the routine. You get stuck in that. Like you wake up super tired, drown yourself with coffee and then go about your day. But like pushing that back, hydrating myself and get out in the sun, moving around, dry brushing, waking myself, checking in with the body, meditating. Then I can get a clear idea of like, okay, am I rested? How am I feeling today? And then I can kind of plan my day accordingly if I need like a longer nap or something or I was like okay I better get my shit done so I can get to bed early yeah. and actually rest and recover so you can continue and actually do things more efficiently totally so do you think like it, that yin and yang kind of thing is it mean to call out what's real no that's a really good question but I, I had to say like, a little bit because it's tough because a lot of people it, would say yes like yes. if you're like hey you like you're fat like, I know that's, like, a very, like, short, right, nippy right. thing. But if it's, like, yeah, that's a fat guy. It's, like, that's not mean. That's, like, real. Mm-hmm. I think I, sometimes the first thing that came to my head whenever you said that was you don't want to hurt their feelings, but I think they might get more of a, a mean or aggressive attitude back is because yeah. they know it. They yeah. almost subconsciously know that they are fat or they know that they have um, low energy, but something is there stopping them mm-hmm. from – taking the action maybe if that makes sense that's the first thing that came to mind because like usually people might be aware of those things but if anything it's almost for the the better for them to better themselves in a sense dude that's like a weird thing like you know some people just don't know like it's and like i was having a conversation with izzy about this and she's like well people aren't taught that i'm like people don't they can't feel like hey if i eat this food like i don't feel good like Mm -hmm. you know like there's certain things where it's like people didn't put together, like we're rediscovering the fact Mm -hmm. that like natural movement and eating good food (laughs) is good for your body. Whoa. Sunlight's good. And water's good. And touching the ground's good. Yeah. Oh my God. Getting back into nature, connecting back with the earth. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah. Mm. Like (laughs) there's, there's fucking scientists who are like, no, it's not proven. (laughs) I'm like, it's fucking proven, man. Like, yeah. people have been around for millions of years, and this yes. is what they did. Mm-hmm. Like, we then we created something, and we're like, you know what? Science didn't show up. I don't believe in it yet. It's like, uh, science yeah. is just to, to show you the foundation. Like, mm-hmm. we had geometry before we had science, guys, or before geometry as a study was actually created. Yeah. You know, it's not like there wasn't geometric shapes, and then we're like, let's figure this one out. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think going back to that, it's almost like, I think there's two sides of it, of the person that probably knows what they're doing wrong or what's wrong. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it's almost like, well, you just kind of got to learn the lessons that you essentially need to learn. But I think, yes, in a sense, that would be beneficial if they completely have no knowledge on what's going on. It's yeah. like, hey, you're eating something that's going to hurt you in the long term. So in that sense, even whatever the reaction is, at least like they're now becoming more aware of it. 
and they can think about it for themselves and make their choice based on whatever they need to feel is best. That's like a slow buildup, like iron or something though, where it's like you're eating it like every day and you don't notice until it hits like critical mass. I'm going to talk to Nathan Hatch about this because I want to like get his take on like, do, oh, yeah, you about to have you, a podcast? That'll be sweet. Yeah, in like a week or two. But it's like, do you feel totally bad like doing all this bad stuff, or is it like a build up and then it's like? Pfft, mm-hmm. what is I think it's, I think I think it's a build up. Or are you asking? Are you asking your subconscious, or are you just are you just speaking? Because <laughs> I think it is I mean, I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna yeah. ask him it, but yeah, I, I think what he would say, just like you know, going back to his story, it's like you know him being an athlete, like a swimmer, I, I believe, you know, for such yeah. a long time um the chlorine uh hurting his thyroid and all that stuff and um sex drive all that i think that was such, such a build up and then boom he gets smashed with cancer and that was yeah. like the the big point of like okay now i gotta fix this shit so yeah. it, it, it's it's very tough because it's like the people want to make that change now to make that short-term investment for the long term essentially and that's the hardest part because it's almost like, oh, well, I kind of feel okay now. Why would I have to do this now? Yeah. And, but then whenever it finally hits you years and years later, you're like, oh, fuck. Now, and now, it's, now, it's, now I got to fix all yeah. this. Kind of stuff. And we talk about this all the time, to follow your excitement and follow your bliss, your joy. Mm-hmm. But that's like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people will argue against that and be like, no, but I, I really want to eat this donut right now. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, now I can't use that example. I had a donut two days ago. I yeah. like donuts. I eat them once in a while. Oh, yeah. Um, I fuck with donuts. But it's like <laughs> subconscious <laughs> mind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, and, then, and then it's always like trying to find the donut. Like I, I just bake chocolate chip cookies. I'm trying to, you know, like mm-hmm. I got my wing recipe pretty much down, you know, and uh, just like the, a good seasoning, no nasty stuff in mm-hmm. it, coconut oil, sea salt. Um, I tried baking chocolate chip cookies a good recipe but I don't know what it was but they literally just like turned into a flatbread cookie like it was a it was a cookie dough pizza like a pizzuki, had a, pizzuki. What, what is that, is that a pizzuki a, I don't know. really have it at some random restaurant it's like a pizza cookie oh my gosh I mean it, they were, they tasted great it just it, they weren't the cookie shape it was like a big rectangle I had to cut them but um this finding a donut like with maybe like better ingredients or something like Dude, that but I, anyway yeah yeah I was thinking of like the best restaurant idea. It's like, like instead of like most restaurants, like think about like the middle, like mm-hmm. of the experience, they're like the person's eating, they're enjoying, how do they feel? What if you just optimize for the end? Like, oh my mm-hmm. God, I left. My hands and feet are good. I have great energy. Uh-huh. I feel great. And my stomach is good. Yes. Like I, what if I you optimize a restaurant you were, yeah. for like, your stomach feeling better than it's ever felt before? You would well, have I mean, some people who are like, I can only eat at this restaurant because it's the only place that makes me feel good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of related to our, our good buddy, Tim Burzins. I hope you're doing well, brother. A uh, little shout out. Um, his mom's, is it a coffee shop, bakery, uh, cafe? I think it's like a cafe kind of thing. I think it's a mix of all three. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I believe she uses coconut oil and mm. you know, good quality food, all that. And folks always leave saying that they feel good leaving. And obviously, because it's good quality food, but focusing on the end of that is like, it would be incredible because one, people obviously come back because yeah. like, holy shit, dude, how'd you feel? I was like, I had energy. I felt light, you know, mm-hmm. I had coffee and just like, just feel relaxed and calm. And, you know, we were laughing and talking, having such a great time. It's like, that's what it's all yeah. about. Not because what typically happens every time someone leaves a restaurant, they feel like tired, sluggish, mm-hmm. bloated. And like, they think that's the normal of almost eating out at a restaurant and it shouldn't yeah. be. So it, that's, um, I was listening to to Ian uh, from Open Source talking to um, Nick, uh, who was the CMO of Quest. And then when I was talking to him, it was like his whole focus is user sentiment. And so I think the difference is people get really caught up in revenue. Mm -hmm. They get caught up in user consumption versus user Mm -hmm. happiness. Like if you have to use something and you're the only product, People don't care if they like it or not. They have to use it. So it's kind of like these restaurants are like, yeah, get them to eat, get them to eat, get them to eat. But they don't like, they don't actually care. Right. Like they're not like, you're going to feel good from this is going to help you. They're just like, you ate food. Good. Go Mm -hmm. pay bill. Leave. Exactly. That almost comes back to, um, should you just tell somebody if they're doing something wrong? Because essentially like the restaurant, the folks like they might not know, 
if they have like the right food quality or not. But it's kind of like, yeah, I think they're not necessarily, they're just focused on like the business model of a restaurant exactly. and like the whole, maybe the experience, but the experience still related to the business model. Like if it's going to be super fancy and like the vibe and all that stuff, but not actually like how the person feels actually consuming what their, 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 the restaurant's yeah. quote unquote product essentially. It's, dude, we talk about this all the time and it's like that dissociation between like the person, like you you talk to all your followers, you answer all your comments, you'll answer all the DMS, yeah. everything like that. Like you're getting to know your community. Yes, which is exactly. Phenomenal. But like when you're sitting there and you're scheming and you're coming up with like, yo, this restaurant's going to have this and that and this and that blah, blah, blah. It's like, you don't even know why are you doing this? Because no one knows yet about mm-hmm. anything, if they're going to like it, if they feel good from it, all mm-hmm. this stuff. And then once you do it, this is how it normally is. People are pushed for cash regardless. So they start mm-hmm. something in, intending to make money oh, versus yes. to make yes. the people feel great because they already have some money. They're not like, oh, we need to make our money back. Like we just created a restaurant. So mm-hmm. like the people who have a little bit of money or at least allocate some money to split testing, which is, hey, this food makes you feel good. Like we'll try this oil. We'll try all these different things. Mm-hmm. It's so... I think that's so important, but I think most people just focus on like the, Hey, like we just started a business. We have to make money versus like, Hey, we just started a business. Who are our customers and why can Mm -hmm. why? Like let's hold them. Like Nick was um, talking about, they had this one customer and she died at quest, but she was like their first like super fan, like would weigh all the bars when she got them, like all this stuff. Yeah. Damn. And like, held them to such a high standard, but that was the model for like, here's a super fan. Like everything should be fine tuned to who she is. Right. And I think like more people need to do that. Like focus on your people, like stop focusing Mm -hmm. on like, how can I milk the most money out of it? And instead like realize your business because you're helping someone with a service or a product, Mm -hmm. help the person, the product's just a means. Yes, exactly. It's almost like legacy, no matter how big or small you take that, but it's like, just actually like, what do you want to do in creating that best thing? And then the people will come to it. Essentially. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not to sound like that cliche, but mm-hmm. it's really most people get that flipped and, you know, and it, of course, like it is tough sometimes, especially like whenever you're getting started, like without having like a big source of revenue coming in, yeah. but it's going to save you in the long run whenever you actually focus on creating something good. I mean, especially yeah. with what we do, um, you almost have to know the people you have to know the ins and outs yeah you're all the way down to their emotions and like their lifestyle and everything because it all is related and how we can help them so it's like i guess it's like a little bit easier for us because we have to go that direction mm-hmm. first to get to know that person but um you're always going to save yourself in the long term if you actually focus on that value and what you're creating seriously and like yeah not just pumping things out just to get revenue in because that's just going to burn you out pretty fast yeah i mean that's the same with content man people are just like just Mm -hmm. pump it out pump it out it doesn't matter like i really want to get someone who can repurpose all my stuff so it does look good on pinterest so it does look good on these different places yeah because like i do post it there and i post it there because one it's easy to do the platforms make it super easy to share Mm -hmm. but two i want to have a presence there and like Mm -hmm. i would say presence is better than no presence but i would love to optimize my presence you know what i mean yeah Yes, 100%. I I think that's a big part where now I'm seeing that I need to optimize too, because um, like we were talking about, like with Instagram TV, it's like, Mm -hmm. what's almost probably going to happen is I film a topic for Instagram TV, and then I might have to film that same topic, but for YouTube, maybe I can edit that. Maybe I can, whatever, I'll figure that out. Yeah. That's what you could do. Get, uh, use uh, that camera Carter was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Use your camera. Oh, we got the, yeah, we got that camera. You did set it yeah. up on a tripod in a little bit more distance. Yeah, that way it's so uh, high quality. Yeah, you can just zoom and crop you'll that. Have, yeah, you'll have the the middle that you can crop because think about like the yeah so uh, normal videos like whatever nineteen twenty by ten eighty p. That's a uh, normal video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are 1080 by 1920, or it might be vice versa. Yeah, I think Instagram is like 1080 by 1080 or something like that. So that's like, you know, that, that's one, a square. One of, third like, yeah. of the the width is shrunk inwards. Mm-hmm. So you could just cut that. Yeah, actually, yeah, that might be the look. Yeah. Because if it's a 10 minute video, anyways, it's a YouTube video. Yes, exactly. That's exactly. why everyone said they were competing. Mm hmm. Exactly. But then at the same time, though, that's, that is the beauty of YouTube as well, where you can expand further beyond 10 minutes, because Mm -hmm. 
way in, in the past, I used to think like, oh my gosh, like I have to make a 10 minute video. Mm-hmm. It's like after I started getting rolling, getting like a little rant, I'm like, damn it, I don't have enough time mm-hmm. <laughs> for Seriously. 10 minutes, which is also, it, it's a blessing and a curse because it's like one, it can get you to make your message more concise. Mm-hmm. But in the same sense, it's like, yeah, knowing that it's still going back to like just making the content, but making sure it's relevant to each platform you're putting it on. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, I'm doing, uh, I'm going to, I did that with red light. I just made three separate videos though, but it's like uh, red light benefits, how red light, how to use red light, and then nice. uh, the red light man. I just did a review on that because oh I know hell yeah, like that. Have you been still red lighting every night? Oh yeah, of course. Every morning, whenever I meditate, I have it. Oh, nice. I got one of those mini uh, meditation chairs, like the cushion yeah. thing. It's actually yeah. my laptop is under it currently to boost it up a little yeah. bit. But- um, I'm on that meditation chair. It's a perfect height where I put the red light on my bed and it's shining like right oh, on nice. my face and neck and everything. So, dude, yeah. light man, get that mm-hmm. twenty. People gotta like, I the amount of people who don't see the sun. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to ask you. So, um, would you would you recommend people like if they can't get, get enough sunlight, get the red light, or like do you use both red light mm-hmm. and the sunlight, or do you I alternate? Think you need both. You need both. a full spectrum, and then. The red lights for more like more the optimization, mm-hmm. you know. But like, if you live at like like it's like I'm in Chicago right now, so sun quality is probably shit no matter what. Yeah, with the air and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and it's such mm-hmm. high up, and there's probably smog because it's a city, so it's like you're not getting the best sunlight regardless. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to say. But like, I mean, of course, I would say use a red light for ten to twenty minutes a day. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. On like, especially in any areas that you need to, like teeth, bones, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, yeah. boost testosterone, whatever, yeah. like thyroid, you know, whatever your why is. Yeah, your thyroid, mm-hmm. um, privates, privates. Oh, that's for stuff, testosterone. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think it's just something like no one does. Are you mm-hmm. reading anything right now? Reading anything currently? Um, oh, the oxygen advantage. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, oh, yeah. that's, yeah, that, that's, um, that's a new thing. I just got that just because I was hooked. I've been taping my mouth shut yeah. uh, for sleep every night. It, it's literally, it's been a game changer. I'm not even kidding. And I'm now I'm becoming more and more conscious of, um, just breathing through my nose throughout the day. Yes. One thing it's been helping me, my speaking like on mm-hmm. podcasts or filming videos, because I know whatever I like first started like filming videos, I would get so out of breath and yeah. almost just like, <gasps> I don't even want to do it because I don't want to like, I don't want to, I don't want yeah. to do this example, but you know, breathing out through my totally. mouth too much and just yeah. letting out all that CO2 and getting lightheaded and can't even think straight. But, um, it's been a game changer, I think, cause I've been waking up feeling more rested. Mm-hmm. So that could, it could be a number of things just breathing through my mouth all night and letting out yeah. more CO2 and being that in that closed room all night. It's really been a game changer so far. But you yeah. have, did you get plants yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got some plants. Of course cool. I got, uh, let's see. Probably see. Oh heck yeah! What's got his that name? one going? Um, I did not name it yet. Did not name <laughs> it. <laughs> or are you asking like what the actual plan is? No, I was asking for the name like. Carl oh okay, I didn't. Something. I didn't name. What do you think we should name it? That looks like a Jerry man. A, a Jerry? Because <laughs> it has to be. I don't think I can ever yeah. get Jerry out. Of it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually I'm about to get more plants. Actually, is that a money tree? Name? No, I actually I don't know what that is because that was actually at my parents' place whenever I oh, went back nice. to visit on yeah. Father's Day. I just yeah. brought it back with me. But so what are like the best bedroom plants? I know the money tree, the mother-in-law, and what's yeah. that one with an A? Like the... Arancia or something. something I, do, like I, I never remember, yeah. but like those are the three. Acera? A-C-E-R-A maybe? Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, so. I think the whole thing's like... I just loved that... Di- like the Brad Pelham was talking about like the room. Mm-hmm. and uh patrick was talking about internal co2 mm-hmm. but i think like optimizing for basically it's optimized for fresh air and exactly. uh breathe through your nose because mm-hmm. that's what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. it's the little things too it, it's so it's so crazy how it is those little things of like just breathing through the nose or maybe getting your sunlight mm-hmm. that they all add up so much and literally like make or break like a healthy body because everything totally. just compounds yeah it, literally insane yeah and that's like so i've got two upcoming podcasts that are about to come out one with david burke which is really good he's uh he wrote friend of a friend Mm -hmm. all about networking oh okay hell yeah (laughs) and it's and then i josiah novak on as well and uh both of them we talk a lot about intentional being intentional with like anything that you do Mm -hmm. and like his was and he started to get me to think about this 
intentional about the time that you give to certain relationships. Mm -hmm. And so whether that's be, like, which can be easy and it can be very difficult as well. It can be, but like, cause I was like, so do you cut out the bad people? You know, like all the networkers are like, get rid of the friends that shouldn't be in your life. It's like, no, just minimize time completely. Right. Exactly. Cause no one wants to burn bridges, especially whenever that's been another thing I've been focusing on too lately. It's because I don't want those bad relationships to just be broken because like a lot of those, I grew up with those people, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they're literally a part of my childhood. And why would you have to push them out of your lives for no apparent reason, just because exactly. you're going and trying to accomplish these goals or whatever? No, because if anything, you should be trying to accomplish those goals just to lift your entire quality of life up anyway, you yeah. know what I mean? Help the world yeah. essentially. So it's like, why would you just like burn bridges like that? And, um, but like you said, it's all about minimizing time because of course, like there might be a different mindset there and you have to go do this thing while they're doing the other thing, but that doesn't say you have to burn the bridge. You know, you can still be friends. still have that time, you exactly, know, they do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so key too for people to realize that like, it's just intention with time and like, mm -hmm. okay, you're friends with some people that, you know, bring you down. Just don't be with them that much. It's not mm -hmm. that hard. Just like, don't text them. Yeah. Don't go to an event where they are. It's like the simple yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which kind of touching on intention too, that's very important because either if you already have your intent, like if you don't have your intentions, mm -hmm. you start thinking about your intentions, actually why you're doing certain things, you know, because like, so you're not just like wandering aimlessly through life. And of course, like it is kind of difficult to quote unquote find your purpose. Mm -hmm. But in the same sense though, you can still... I think relate some kind of intentions to how you want your life to look or how you want to feel or something of this exactly. sort that you started at least moving in that direction. And I think that is almost like kind of what led me here, mm -hmm. you know, just going like on having intentions like, Oh, I want my life to look this way. So I know these choices or these actions probably won't support that. So I'm going to start going in this direction essentially. Yeah. Um, but if you're not even clear on anything that you kind of want in your life, then you're not going to have really any intention. And then that's going to just cause you to wander exactly. endlessly, and then probably end up having a midlife crisis or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't know. Or most just... people, most people don't have intention with most things. I mean, yeah. I liked the definition of minimalism, which is just owning things that have an intention behind them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's, that's like beautiful. how we all should live. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think even like we did a lot of moving in like the past, you know, several months and mm -hmm. that really has like shown me what do I really use on a typical, like a daily basis? Like what do I need? Yeah. And like, what are the things that like, ah, you know, I can just like get rid of this. I'll put it on like the app let or something like that and just get it out yeah. of here because it's really not doing anything beneficial for me, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that. I heard someone's like um, own a hundred things or less always. Yeah. That's very interesting to think yeah. about. Like if you kind of like count up like every single item. Yeah. I don't would you want count, to. Would you count clothes as one or do you yeah. count like individual no. t-shirts? Individual things. Oh, wow. Damn. That's, that's intense. Dude. I mean, like, honestly, we don't, I don't yeah. wear that many different things. If I right, have like, yeah. I probably have like eight to 10 shirts that like, that's all I wear. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, you have Derek John? Yeah. On the podcast yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You post. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta watch that one yeah how was that i bet that was fine good yeah man good. he yeah. talks a lot about uh we talked about summer style and stuff and shorts and like because i remember carter was like i hate wearing shorts mm -hmm. eric's like really trying to um push himself to to wear shorts this summer mm -hmm. and like get in a short style mm -hmm. gave a few that he likes he likes his company aesthetic revolution a lot for um for like fitted clothing or... and stuff Okay. Would you say aesthetic revolution? Yeah. Don't oh, yeah. Too. Huh? Oh yeah, Don't it mean. is. Yeah. It's sick. Cause it's all about fit too. Yeah. And getting, yeah. I'm really going to try to get on, uh, uh, Shane who created vitally also. Oh dude. I was literally about to see, see we're already, the, the minds yeah. are connected a little bit. I was like, <laughs> vitally or vitality. I've been saying uh, that. Yeah. Vitality, but it's sure. probably vitality. Literally it's like, probably. not like, you know, just, they are making like really nice cuts. Like uh, Carter actually just got a few of their shirts. Oh, nice. Like literally he's gooning out over the, the fit just because like they're just, they fit perfect in the arms, the chest, oh, the yeah. back, the length is spot on. It's like, yeah, whatever that guy's doing, however he's doing his measurements, he's doing them right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I just, I mean, good fitted clothing. We talked about this for a while. Makes you feel good. Makes you act differently. makes people act differently towards you because you look at like, dude, I saw this guy yesterday. We were 
sitting at sushi son um mm-hmm. and he was wearing which derek talked about this brand i can't remember it's like a french brand you know that heart with the eyes you see on like a lot of stuff they always um, do collabs with companies the heart with the eyes i'm, I'm not it's not ringing a bell yeah, it's like coude something i don't know it's some french company i keep just thinking about weird had, like, cartoon things that i put on instagram graphics so i'm probably thinking of something I, completely, yeah <laughs> completely different but it's like a high-end brand but like this guy like the dopest shirt and i was like yeah he's probably someone yeah probably just because of the just the what thing. he's wearing like yeah it's, uh, yeah a low key brand that if like, if you knew about that, you probably just had some interest in it. Exactly. Or interest in what you're doing or how you're presenting yourself. So. Yeah. yeah. It's but like one of those that. things. So you're reading the oxygen advantage. Anything mm-hmm. else? Uh, at the moment, uh, about to probably listen to the four hour work week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim Ferriss just to, you know, listen to, cause I know you said you were loving it recently and mm-hmm. uh, I got to see what all the hype is about. I can't believe like, I, that seems like a pretty, like it's such a popular book that everyone pretty much has dove into. <laughs> everyone, dude. So, cause it's all, it's like 2007, right? Yeah. And then in 2009, I think he redid it. And mm-hmm. that's what, like, that uh, was yeah. the first book I read mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to dive into that. I like to keep just a couple of things on my plate just so I yeah. can do it. Cause yeah. Um, but I'm going to be doing the audio and I think, realizing that I'm better with, or I can take in information much more fast uh, or effectively through yeah. audio. That's been a win for me. Are you um, messing around with many chat at all? Many chat? No, I haven't set that up yet for the yeah. personal brand. No, I haven't set that up yet. They got a free course where they walk you through a lot of it. It's pretty good. Oh really? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Just like set up. Cause like settings and stuff. And like took me, I was trying to figure out like they changed variables and I was trying to figure out like, how do you make a first name a variable? Oh yeah, so long, and then I'm like, yeah, ah, it's right here. <laughs> right. Hey, it's always that those little learning curves on everything. That's for sure. But yeah, I was, I want to set that up too. It's always that's probably something easy to answer questions on and stuff like oh, yeah. that. And just yeah, just keep everyone updated. Pretty yeah. much like texting, dude. Thanks for being my subconscious mind for course, today's man. always quick <laughs> solo cast. But um. Yeah, well, we got to connect we'll like that on that deeper level. Do another level. one of these soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, because I, I feel like I, I enjoy it so much, and we can just dive into so many topics. But uh, are you reading anything recently? I didn't ask you. Um, just really Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, it's just a book about life. I can't remember the name right now. Oh, The Toltec Art of Life and Death. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Sure. But it, it's really it's another one. I want to. Damn it! <laughs> Every time I ask you, you're always giving me like five new things I got to read. I'm like, damn I'll, it! I got to. I got to bring you it. I'll bring yeah. you. It. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. But that's awesome, man. Good. Awesome. I'm gonna go. Probably get my sunlight. I feel like me deprived. Too. About to make a party plate and head out in the sun. It was raining the past couple of days, so yeah, I was too. like, I'm so happy the sun's out. So it's about to be. It's about to be yeah. solid. Hell yeah! Cool. Cool, man. Well, thank you. Of course, thank you. We will talk soon. Yes, we will. Peace out.